Hi, I'm Dan. I'm a sleep medicine physician, and if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. I want to tell you today about bedtime restriction. It is the most powerful cognitive behavioral therapy technique for insomnia. It is also known as sleep compression and sleep restriction therapy, and it works by exploiting your natural sleep drive to help you sleep better. And a word on that, what is sleep drive? Well, sleep just as hunger is homeostatically regulated, which simply means that just as you become more and more hungry, the longer you go without eating, the more and more sleepy you become, the longer you go without sleeping. So the longer you go without sleeping, the stronger your sleep drive, your hunger for sleep becomes, and that will help you not only to fall asleep, but sustain sleep. So uh, how does this work in, in, uh, in practical reality? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say uh, you have a person that needs to sleep about seven hours. Then what you will ask this person is that for a brief time period, typically two weeks, they spend less time in bed than they need to sleep. And the hope here is that when they go to bed, they have such a strong sleep drive that they not only will fall asleep quickly, but remain asleep. And uh, we're gonna go over this again uh, in just a second here, if you, if you didn't quite understand it. Uh, what will be helpful uh, moving forward is uh, if you have a sleep diary so you can keep track of how you're doing and uh, you can grab a pen and paper and then just uh, create something like what I've uh, uh, um, sketched out here. Uh, up on top here it says day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, here it says uh, in bed, slept, out of bed and time in bed. In bed means what time you got into bed, slept, how many hours you slept, uh, out of bed, what time you got out of bed, and time in bed, how many hours uh, you spent in bed. Now, the first thing uh, you need to ask yourself is how much time you think you need to sleep. Keep in mind, very few people need eight hours of sleep. Uh, some do. Some need even more than that. Most people need about six to seven hours of sleep. Uh, some people function on even less. So in light of that, ask yourself how much time you think you need to sleep, how much sleep you need. If it's hard, then uh, you can think back upon a time where you didn't have any obligations, uh, a time where you were on vacation, and how much you slept at that point in time. Uh, if you have really no way to gauge it, then just pick seven hours. Uh, because that's the typical uh, uh, amount of time that people uh, feel they need to sleep. And the second thing uh, uh, you need to ask yourself is, what is a convenient time for you to wake up and get out of bed in the morning? And using those two things, we will create a sleep schedule for you to work on over the next two weeks. Now, Let's, for argument's say, uh, sake, say that uh, you feel that if you got seven hours of good quality sleep, you would feel pretty good. And let's say that you um, uh, think that getting out of bed at 6 a.m. is a convenient time for you, then what you should do is the following. First, starting with those seven hours of sleep that you think you need, subtract one hour. So for the next two weeks, I recommend that you spend about six hours in bed, not more, okay? And again, the goal here, the hope, is that when you go to bed, you have a sleep drive that can not only help you fall asleep, but sustain sleep. So the first rule here uh, is that you should not go to bed before midnight. Why do I say midnight? Well, it's because uh, we were saying that uh, your time to get out of bed should be 6 a.m. and you should spend six hours in bed, then midnight is the earliest you're allowed to go to bed. If you feel sleepy at 9 or 10 or 11, 
try not to sleep yet. Try to stay up till midnight. If the opposite happens, if it is midnight and you're not feeling sleepy, you're feeling alert, then don't go to bed. Never go to bed unless you feel sleepy. Now, that's the first component. Second component is the wake up time. Very important that you not only wake up at 6 a.m., but you get out of bed at this time as well. And thirdly, uh, if you feel sleepy during the day, uh, then try to avoid sleeping during the day. If you have a really strong need to sleep during the day, then take a short power nap, not more than 20 minutes. And uh, follow this over the next two weeks and uh, we shall see how things go. Uh, the first week is typically very challenging because a lot of people have a hard time sleeping even if they go to bed late and then they have to get up early in the morning which means that they become pretty sleep deprived. Well, just keep in mind, this is only temporary and the hope is that even if you sleep quite poorly one night, you will increase your sleep drive and sleep better the following night or the night after that. I'll check in with you on a daily basis. And, you know, please ask me if you have any questions. And finally, uh, as you can see here, I've written sleep efficiency and how to calculate that. Well, um, it's not very important now, but I want to mention it. Sleep efficiency is a way of um, uh, uh, getting a n number, like quantifying uh, the the, the quality of your sleep in a way uh, and, it, and it works as follows so sleep efficiency is time slept divided by time in bed so for example if you have slept four hours but you spent eight hours in bed your sleep efficiency is 50 percent which is terrible uh, hopefully you will be getting towards a sleep efficiency of 85 or even 95 percent all right i hope this was helpful uh, please let me know if it wasn't uh, and I will um, ask you to do this for about two weeks again. I will um, check in every day and uh, give you some helpful advice and some general uh, 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 advice when it comes to insomnia. And I look forward to hearing from you.